But ladies and gentlemen, the picture you have seen isn't exactly the truth of myself. I will say too that there was more aircraft in that film than there was ever on the beach. <laughs> And I didn't recognize anybody. <laughs> but, uh, I will admit it was a good picture. Uh, but anyway, I, I got a small boat. Well, I waited out a long way to get in one of them. And then I was all right because I climbed up the side of the ship, a uh, bigger ship, and uh, managed to get away. But when I got to Dover, it was just as bad as the beach. Hardly anybody there. I wonder why. And well, there was a train there. Well, well there was a train line, but no train. The the women the the women that did sandwiches and tea, which I would have loved a, a cup of tea. Did you get the bread and jam? They're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> no bread and jam. No. No. Oh. No. See, you can't believe everything you see in the movies then. And as I, as I was uh, part of that, part, well, with the boy, we were collected in uh, by uh, someone from the one of the officers from the Lancashire who you live, and um, <laughs> he, uh, he t got us organised into a truck that took us to a bathhouse. We went to the bathhouse, it was somewhere where we got cleaned up. And I had a complete change of uniform, boots, socks, everything. And I got a different rifle, a, a Ross rifle, a sniper's rifle it was. But uh, from then on, I was transferred to the civilian population uh, for, for my keep. For, for for two weeks, I can tell you the name of the lady. I was, and she had one son. That was Mrs. Vipon. She was a very nice person, and she, she looked after me real good. They sent me over to France. Yeah. What for? I didn't know at that time, but I soon learned. I can tell you that. Boy, what did I ever? And uh, I, I went into a little place in France called Ronk, R-O-N-Q. And I was only there about four weeks and straight up into Belgium. And that's where the Germans started their invasion on, on, the, on, on France. And my, my job, or, well, our job, and I joined the Lancashire Fusiliers at a moment They put me in it. Uh, it was the All War Regiment, World War One War Regiment, that had been sent up there. I think it was around uh, July, July of 1939. Well, I joined them. And, well, there was a Quite a few of us sent over at that time, and we were all moved to different regiments. Uh, it was interesting at, at first, but then it got worse. Well, on the retreat, we, we retreated from Belgium, uh, Brussels in Belgium. And uh, on the way, no transport, not, nothing for us, but uh, the different ones that were coming out of the front line uh, of, uh, of uh, Belgium. And we had the, the river that used to go across Belgium. It, it, um, there was a bridge over it and it was supposed to have been blown. And um, it never got blown. So the Germans just came across the place, eh? Right? And um, naturally we were ordered at that time to uh, move out. And so that's where we started our, uh, um, <laughs> our fighting anyway. And uh, it was fighting all the way down to, to the beach. In fact, 
I spoke, I did speak to, to Lord God and the captain that we had at that time, which way do we go? And he said, that way. And I took that way. And it was down to the bit. And it, it was, that was on the 28th of May. Uh, it was the 28th of May, and I didn't get down to that beach until 4th of June. Well, not only me, but there was, there was seven of us. And uh, on the way down, there's a row of houses with garages in the back. Now, before the war, I was riding a motor, motorcycle, and I was also um, learning to drive the car, my father's car, of course. And uh, I was the only one who could drive. So we brought the lock on the, on the garage door and opened the doors. Bingo, there was the car. So I have a good look at it, and that, you wouldn't believe it. The key was in the ignition. <laughs> there you go. Number one, number two. <laughs> so, I turned the key. Number four. <laughs> the car started. So, what do I do? Come on, boys. Push the car out. Come on, help me. Of course they did. All, all on the top of it, every one of them. And we got down to the ridge. It was about, about five miles. About oh, seven, seven kilometres, some some like that. One was not a long way, but it was, we were all bugging. We were really, oh yeah, we were really stuffed up. Mm. I could have laid down anywhere. No food, no further ammunition, and I, I, I couldn't do anything. None of us. Still had my rifle, of course, but I couldn't use it. No good to me. I could use it for a battery ram, <laughs> but I still did the work I was supposed to do. And we got down to the beach, not anybody there. So, what do we do? Wait until we're told what to do. And that's how I finished up. And even when I, when, when we did get to, uh, yes, when I got to the beach with that cow, the boys that were with me just disappeared. And possibly they got away quicker than I did. But I had to dismantle that car by putting my bayonet into the petrol tank. We had red cups there and they made me do it. And they made me smash the, uh, what I could of the, the uh, distributor. And uh, well, it was all traumatic, you know. I just did what I was told. I did what I was told. And, uh, well, I have, I've often thought, late, you know, at later times, if I hadn't done what I had done, I would have, would have been dead now, or a prisoner. So and I wasn't them. going to be a prisoner. <clears throat> and uh, I was married on the 17th of August, 1940, when I was on Dunkirk leave, and uh, I had the two children, I was a boy and a girl. My, my daughter died early in life, so it left the two of us. And uh, I thought the right, right thing to do. I had a good talk to my wife then, and she agreed that we should get out going somewhere else. And I said, well, I was going to go to South Africa. But they wanted to, me to go there on, on, on my own and send me home after two years and take me back to South Africa. Well, I thought I was, yeah, well, I'd enough going away on my own. Yeah. However, I tried New Zealand, they did the same. Australia would only take me. So if you want to know something, I'm a Labour voter. <laughs> But I did a lot of work with him, and I was uh, on scrutiny for voting. Were you? Oh, yeah. oh, we'll have to have a very long chat after, so I can learn some of the secrets. Oh, handy, you are a handyman to have around. <laughs> we, we thought there.
there might be some people in the audience that might like to ask you a question. Are you happy to take some questions from people in the audience? Well, you don't make it too hard, really. Don't make it too hard. Anyway, um, it's an honour to meet you and thank you for your service. I think we all owe you a great debt of gratitude for our freedom. Uh, can I ask you, sir, um, what did you serve post Dunkirk? Prepared for the invasion, but I couldn't keep up. I couldn't keep up with the work. That I, the job or whatever I had to do, sorry. <coughs> My name's Daniel. Um, I was wanting to know if you fought alongside the French, uh, and if so, what uh, what did you think of them? No, that's a funny question, Noel. Because we were going into France, into, into Belgium, and uh, the French were coming out of the Baginot line on horseback. Now, we were going in to protect France, and they were coming out. <laughs> and the Baginot line, they couldn't fire their guns that way, that way, only that way. There were fixed guns on the Maginot line, and they never used it. And a lot of those French that were in there, I was disappointed. I complained about it, believe it or not. We one didn't like it. They were going past us, and you know, it seemed very silly. Yeah. <laughs> they, they certainly, they certainly got out of France. When the Germans pushed them out, yes, for sure. And a lot of them landed in England. And the Germans were stripping some of us uh, Englishmen, English soldiers, taking the dogs off, dog tags off, and their clothes, stripping them, and dressing in the uniform and getting into England as spies at that time. And there was a lot of in fact, um, Britain called it the phony war. Well, it was phony too, as far as I was concerned. <laughs> I was wondering what you did on the last day of the war. Where were you, your memories of that? Oh, dear. No, let me think about that one. <laughs> um, the last day of the war. Well, I had one birthday. I do not know that. I became 21 on the 30th of June, 1942, uh, yeah, 40, yeah, 40, 1940. Yeah. I became a, yeah. Um, was everyone happy? Well, I, I, did, I did celebrate as much as I could the end of the war, yeah. Where were you then? I had a couple of beers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not a drunkard in any way, but uh, certainly not a, enjoyed the beer. We think you deserved a beer. We think you deserved a beer for that. Isn't that right? I'm sure. A lot of time because I've been among, I used to go to different association, army and, and navy and air force, but uh, I, I've. I've moved around a lot in, the, in that circle, if you might call it a circle. And none of them, have, well, I won't say none of them, but some of them have denied and not believed me. And I've had people say to me, you, you must have had a, 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 a pain angel on your shoulder and I put my arm up like that and I say, oh, the damn thing stays there. That's right, that's right. <laughs> um, those medals you have, are some of them from your father? Um, so, well, what I type of um, do you have? I can't wear them all. It's one special though, isn't it? Oh, well, this one. one. The, big, the big one here. Yes, yeah, this one here. This one here is a veteran's badge. Yeah. That one is, is the King's Badge, and that one is the one that I've received in the last month. Could you tell, use the microphone and t tell them about this one? Yeah, that one is the French 
Yes. There we go. Yeah. Tell us about that French no, that one. That one is... is one. No. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I can see it. It's this one. <laughs> I'll hold it. I'll let you hold There we go. Thank you. Tell, tell the audience about it, because it's special, isn't it? Well, I didn't expect it. I did not... I honestly say I did not expect it. Simply because I never asked for it. And how, how, it, it were, I got a letter from the British government first. And uh, I read the letter and I thought, oh, well, someone's having a go at me. <laughs> I really did. I honestly really did. And about uh, two weeks later, I got another letter from France. I uh, thought, hello. <laughs> oh, 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 what do I do? I, I do the right thing. I make an inquiry about it. Oh yes, it's pretty right. Don't worry about it, Vic. You're right. <laughs> it, it took a long time to get. Now, I wondered, I've been going to the RSL on Anzac Day for, what, well, since 1950, yeah, it will be 1954. And I've, I've got a certificate there from them for 50 years service. So that will give you an idea of what I used to do there. But I still go. And I go to the RSL in, in uh, Sangay. I've been in other RSLs, but irrespective of that, um, the question again? I got away from what I was asked. I know, that's all right. You're allowed to do that. The it, French... It's the French, this, this Legion, French, Legion. French Legion of Honour, a medal yeah. that he got about a month ago. I did get that one a month ago. Yeah. What you would say to young people about joining the army? Well, the only thing that I can say in that respect is the fact that if they're going to join the army, okay, join the army. More for a trade purpose or education, yes, but not to go to war, no. Now I remember the war, war years was, as a kid. My brother joined the Navy, the eldest brother joined the Air Force. My uncle was killed in France in the First War, and I left it killed in, in Vietnam, and I had another nephew that was a paratrooper and he broke his hand, but he's, all, he's still alive. Well, I because it's, yes, it's all experience. Whatever you do is experience. I, I struck a bad patch of employment, and I didn't talk to my wife, and I said, you know, I said, I don't mind being unemployed. I says, I think I'll join the army to go. No, I'm, I'm digging. And I, I, I wanted to go to, to um, Korea. Now that's right, right back. That's exactly where I wanted to go back to. to, to. But uh, I went up there and of course, when I'm stripped in front of the doctor, he said to me, he said, What's that? Because I was really in the side of the storm. And I said, oh, I had an operation or for whatever. Well, I can't, I can't remember what I said. But I said, I had an operation for whatever. And uh, he said, no. He said, how old are you? I said, well, I'm 30, I was 33, 34 at the time. I said, we can't take you. I said, oh, oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> and that was in Brisbane. <laughs> they brought the recruiting office in Brisbane. <clears throat> but uh, I, I'd like to say something. What was that I was going to say? I don't know. Oh, could I ask a one, one question? Is there anybody else here that was at Dunkirk? <laughs> We think that you have that honour alone. And, and can we please um, 
Thank you, Victor, very, very much. Thank you. We have a couple of little gifts for you, Victor, because we do think that a couple of gifts, we think you're very special. This is something are you, called... Are you one of them? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but you and I are going to have a chat about local government elections before you go home. <laughs> This is this is actually from the Lord Mayor, Graham Quirk, and myself from Brisbane City Council because uh, we are just so thrilled to have you as one of our citizens of Brisbane. And so it's a little bit of um, port which might sort of help you on a cold night. <laughs> now, this family, so this, this Victor is a gold card to this cinema, which means you can come any time you like and watch any movie you like for as long as you live. We've also got something from us. Um, it's some champagne and some glasses for, for both of you to uh, enjoy. Thank you very much for your gift, and I appreciate it too. But it wasn't necessary. Oh, it no. certainly <laughs> was. And the same applies to you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> you've always wanted the stage, now you've got it. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't know what to say. Lost <laughs> for words. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to me. I wanted something like this to happen. More than one. Because I only want to tell the truth. The truth of what I went through. That's all I ever wanted to do. Because. Because. <laughs>